We're talking about the um, prospect of a Labour government, and even I admit that this is now a serious prospect. But Labour has largely accepted the government's analysis of the economic state of the country, identifying this very large black hole in the public finances. What scope, then, do you think a Labour government has to do things differently to make life better? I mean, the Labour opposition have been clear that you can't spend your way out of lots of these problems and accept the responsibility of fiscal discipline. But it's quite hard to imagine two political parties in different places in dealing with the problems that confront the nation and you've just gone through them. The sense I get of the government is that they fear that they are at the end of a cycle. So the way that they are dealing with all of these problems is a government desperately hoping that they might survive in power, therefore doing everything in a very, very political way, by which I mean characterising what's going on in a very sort of crude, divisive way, the attacks on all the union leaders, for example, whereas Labour, quite understandably and rightly, is looking at these things in a much more long-term way. For example, what is the solution to employment in the health service? The, the numbers of vacancies are going up. If you don't reach some sort of conclusion in relation to pay for nurses, you will go on having a terrible spiral where the health service gets worse and worse and worse. You need to address that issue in some profound long-term way. Uh, it, it is, it's quite um, uh, dist distressing, is probably the right word, to see the Secretary of State for Health scuttling in and out of television studios refusing to engage on the issue, which is pay for nurses, not <coughs> just with the interviewers, but with, the, but with the, the nurses themselves. So you are seeing two political parties in very, very different places. <coughs> and, I mean, I don't say what the answer is, but if you ask people who's going to produce a better medium and long-term solution to, for example the question of the health service, is it going to be the party desperately trying to cling on to power or a party that has an opportunity, is responsible and wants to appear responsible? That, that is a very interesting perspective. Let's just think for a moment about the impact of the Liz Truss government because yeah. in the Conservative Party, what that uh, government did was to make it impossible for the right of the party to continue to advocate a low-tax policy. It strikes me that it's also made it impossible for Labour to advocate a high spend policy because the consequences are so clear. And many people in Labour might be disappointed by that, but Sir Keir Starmer might be rather pleased. What do you think? I completely agree with your analysis because the effect of the Truss government was, and, it, and, and I don't remember it for decades, the consequences of what a government doing having an immediate effect on the value of the pound, mortgage rates, which then almost immediately had a knock-on effect into people's lives. And irresponsibility in government is therefore now an impossibility because mortgage rates goes up, etc. But it doesn't just affect the standing of the Conservatives as economic managers. That's gone straight down the floor. But it also means the idea of unfunded expenditure is now an impossibility. So there are constraints on both political parties. But the fact that there are constraints does not mean you cannot address the issues. And your personal and political confidence as a leader of the nation determines how willing you are to deal with those problems.